Welcome to the second interview in the Europe Direct Blanchard Sound series, Celebrating Women Entrepreneurs. In this second interview, I spoke to Janet O'Carroll. Janet is a wedding, event and commercial photographer based in Dublin 15. In this interview, she describes how she turned what began as a hobby into a business, as well as the challenges faced when balancing running a business with her personal and family life. Welcome, Janet, and thanks for speaking to us at Europe Direct today. Thank you for having me. Full disclosure to anyone who's uh, listening, Janet is in fact my sister, so uh, familiar with a lot of this already, but I think she'll have a lot to say about running her own business that should be of interest to a lot of people. So, will we get started? Why not? <laughs> okay. Um, it's a bit strange for both of you. It is being sister and brother, yeah, <laughs> yeah. but it's, it's fun. Yeah, looking forward to it. Listen. So, can I start um, by asking you how you actually got into photography and at what point did you feel this is something? Yes, um, I always had a love of photography, I think, over the years. I used to have exhibitions, going to see them, but I stayed at home with my kids for many years, and I decided I'm going to get my camera, so I got my first camera. Uh, loved it, but knew very little about how to use it. So Barry, who is my brother, as you know, is a member of uh, St. Bridget's Camera Club here in Blanchestown, and he suggested I join, so I did. And that really, I learned so much, lovely people there, and um, we learned a lot. I remember when I started being in awe of some of the work that people were doing, the competitions. I was like, oh my God, I'll never get to that level. But very quickly, uh, to my surprise as well, I was entering the competitions and being placed and in fact, sometimes winning them. And that gave me a lot of confidence. But I think it was a big thanks to the people in the club and Barry as well, because I wouldn't have been very technically. So I think I learned a lot of the Photoshop and that type of thing um, from them and obviously how to use the camera and so on and so forth. So that gave me confidence. And then I remember people saying, you know, you should do this. And a family asked me for portraits. So I said, OK. So I was really nervous, but I said, I'm going to do this. And I borrowed a backdrop because I didn't have one. And I borrowed flashlights because I didn't have two. And I did the portraits and I blew the flash up on the guy who I borrowed it from. So it wasn't my best start. And it cost me more than obviously I charged the people to replace the, the flash. But it wasn't a good, a good, it should have put me off, but it didn't. And they were delighted with the pictures. It all turned out well. I replaced the flash and I, I went on from there. So yeah, that was that was the start. And you were lucky because I, I, I remember when you got into it and I suppose you were lucky because you had the natural flair for it and then it was just a case of learning the technical. Yeah. yeah. And did that take long to do? Yeah, I, th I think you're still learning. I think it, it does. It does. I think the basics of, you know, editing, uh, Photoshop, Lightroom, there's, it's a mire. There is so much to learn. But what I will say is, there's an answer to every question. You just key it in. How do I do this? And you can, I usually would have the, the iPad with the tutorial on as I'm working on the screen and, and that way you can learn so much and it's all there. The information is all there. It really is if you if you go looking and you take the time. So you can self learn a lot of yeah. the technical stuff. And, and from, from that first job, where did it go from there? Was it word of mouth? Was it? Yeah, the first, the, the first job, um, it probably was a little bit of word of mouth and then uh, I had started putting pictures up on my Facebook and people, you know, started to get to know me. So I decided, okay, I'm, I'm going to give this a go. So I, with the help of family and Barry, <laughs> set up a website. Uh, so a nice, simple website, nothing, nothing too elaborate. Uh, and we put some of my past work on and then I got my first wedding. So again, very scary, you know, to do a wedding. But I saw so what I did was as a photographer who I had shadowed because that's obviously a wedding is a very big job. So I shadowed him on a couple of weddings before, you know, for no, just, just to get to learn the trade, if you like, because, you know, there's so many elements of the wedding day. So I shadowed him and I learned a lot with him. So I actually paid him to come with me on that first wedding, just to be sure, because it's, it's a couple's first day and, and you don't want to, obviously, you want to capture it's everything for them. It is a lot of pressure, but it's amazing. I was sick in the stomach before I did my first wedding. I really was, even though I had him with me. But now I don't even think about it. It's amazing. Oh, hundreds, yeah. Yeah, so now it's, it's second nature, but you still always are, adrenaline is pumping and you you know you want and to get everything right 
like it'll turn up and it's poor, right? You know, oh, yeah, you're look, looking. yeah, I used to get stressed again about weather, but you just realize these are all out of your control and the couple are going to have a wonderful day anyway, and you make the best of it. I have a lovely heart shaped umbrella, lovely red heart shaped umbrella, so I bring that. And in fact, I even add rain into the picture sometimes, and couples love it. And most of them will go. I remember being in Kilkenny with a couple once, and we were to go to the castle. It was a winter wedding, the castle was closed, it was lashing rain. But their pictures were just when the sky was turning blue and they were just amazing and they were great fun because they wanted to so i never worry anymore because you'll always and if you're if you're good and you think outside the box you can find somewhere it's interesting what you said about the umbrella because two of our other speakers lisa Donovan and angelica Heron, both talk about using challenges as opportunities oh yeah there's a great example mm. of it it's raining yeah. right let's yeah. get the umbrella out. yeah Absolutely, make something, make something of it. You know, people think, oh, you want a really sunny day. That's a nightmare for us because you've shadow on faces and everything else. So a flat dust cry is actually, it's actually much better. Yeah, yeah. They obviously get the dress look. Yeah. Oh yeah, else. once the dress looks good and, the bride, and once the bride looks good. <laughs> and then to move on to the more business side of things, what was the process of setting up business like, a lot of red tape yeah not know. really for i think i knew okay i wanted to be a sole trader because that was quite simple setup so i rang the tax office asked them how i would go about i registered the business name first so that was online you know it wasn't that cost much to do i think it was 20 30 euros okay. not not expensive at all obviously you have to check the name isn't taken and yeah. so i did that got the business name then i registered uh with the tax office as a sole trader with the business name they were really helpful and they actually talked me through the process of registering so i did that myself uh, i needed business insurance obviously as well because i've been a photographer you're in and out of places and so i got that again i, I looked up and asked a few people from the camera club and, and there was a place there that specialized in camera photography insurance so i did that so i was i was ready to go yeah that's mm. brilliant yeah and um, next question i mean this series is obviously about women photographers mm. are there any challenges you experienced particularly as a woman getting established in business? Uh, business no i would have to say no not at all um i think for me being a woman in photography is actually to my advantage because brides, you know, they're getting ready in the bedroom, they're getting the dress on, so I can be in there and, and they're very comfortable to have a woman. I think even shoots with children, you know, newborn shoots, things like that. I think they're very happy to have a woman. So I used to say there's a lot of men who are very technical and spend thousands on equipment. And I used to say, well, at least it's the one piece of equipment they can't buy. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, so I have to say definitely not this is not to be a woman at all. Yeah, you know. I've seen you at very important to be a people person because you're directing oh yeah i mean you, you need you need to be a good photographer but you also equally need to be very good with people because you know especially on a wedding day or anything like that like you're dealing with people all day long so you're trying to get them together for photographs and the thing is just to be friendly and you know you get it back tenfold from people you know which is lovely you know really is nice but definitely need to be good with people yeah and, and i mean I, I was reading an article in Mm. And she actually described a few moments where she experienced quite serious mental mm. issues. Is this something you've encountered? It is. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely is. I think on two occasions. And uh, the first occasion, both videographers, funny enough, no offense, because I've worked with fabulous videographers. Um, the first one was uh, he assumed I must have been a friend of the couple that a woman couldn't obviously be taking pictures. Uh, and he was very rude and arrogant throughout the day. But look, you get over that. And I think the second was a videographer who a friend of mine worked with. He'd comment on my footwear. You know, was I fixing my makeup? Things that he would, you'd never say to a man, obviously. But again, I just let it roll over me because at the end of the day, it's a couple's wedding day. And the last thing they want is, you know, uh, any kind of atmosphere. So I just let it go. And I think I'm lucky, as I say to people in another job, if somebody's like that and you're going in every day, that's hard for me. I only see them once. And in fact, the second guy, I actually told my partner that I was doing weddings with at the time, if he's on the job, I won't do it. So I have the privilege of being able to do that, you know, but. And it's really interesting what you said about commenting about what you wear, because yeah. that, that came up with Jill Barrett the other day. One of the questions I asked her is whether in business or politics, it's often commented on in the media that of what, what is the yeah. wearing. Mm -hmm. Never do the same. Jamen. No, 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 no. What do you think? Is that something you'd agree with? I would totally agree. Oh, you never hear 
about what a man's wearing, but it's always, oh, she made a mistake with that outfit or look at her there, you know. And I think for me, I remember it was my the heel, the height of the heel on my shoe. Oh, look at her. She's t- teetering down the, you know, but I'm five foot two, so I'm virtually challenged. Yes. So if I'm doing a wedding with a six foot groom, I need a little bit of a, a little bit of a boost, you know. Yeah, it's part of my equipment. Exactly. No, yeah. I have a step ladder, yeah. I had to do a shoot of, uh, it was a gay wedding actually, and they released 100 red balloons off the Millennium Bridge in town. He was a Sinn Féin County councillor, yeah. yeah. Lovely, lovely couple. Two Chris's, Chris and Chris. Uh, lovely guys, and it was a really fun day, and there was no pressure. Windy day in Dublin, 100 red balloons, all the guests on the bridge, me on the ladder, with a, a ne'er do well at my feet, shaking, saying, Take a picture of me, Mrs as I'm trying to get them all and capture the balloons in the wind. You don't need one chance to get the job. Oh yeah, well, the balloons were gone, they were gone. <laughs> yeah, they were gone. But we got it, they released the balloons and it made an amazing shot over the Dublin skyline and they were delighted with it. And uh, yeah, so it all worked out in the end. Any unusual or funny experiences that come to mind? Yeah, I was doing a commercial job for a large building firm here in Dublin and they wanted me to go on the roof of a building down around the IFSC, quite high, and I'm not good with heights. And we were sitting at the business meeting and I didn't, I wanted this job, so I couldn't say anything. And they were saying, yeah, we'll put her in the crate, you know, like a little Easter bunny, we'll stick her in there and put her up on the crane. And my heart was in my boots. I was like, Jesus, how am I going to do this? Um, in the end, they didn't do it, but we did go on the roof. We had to walk up all the steps, and I got over my fear, even in the howling wind. And we, was there a storm on the way? There was a storm on the way, and all the staff and crew were up with the banner, and I was up higher again on you know this little peak thing on the top of the yeah, building. Yeah. I was up on that, and great view of Dublin, and the picture was fantastic. So, yeah, I conquered my fear. Ever been in a situation where you felt something was going wrong? Oh yeah, yeah, all, all the time, something like your battery starts, the flash is dying. But again, I think I used to panic more in the beginning and now you just go, okay, you know, we'll deal with that. Or our weddings can go out of control, you know, with guests and things like that. And you're trying to get family you shots. Stuff in there, yeah. Really yeah, like if something, you know, there's somebody, family shots into a wedding, you're, there's always somebody missing, he's in the loo, he's gone to the room. So I said, okay, we'll just do some couple shots while we're waiting. So we use the time, you know, so I'm, I'm used to that at the stage. Again, in the beginning it was, Gonna do, but now it's you just yeah, get it work around it. Oh, it is like trying to, oh, it is trying to like hurry cats, but I find if you tell them, Look, the minute we do this, you can go to the bar, it kind of focuses. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I want to talk to you now about, I mean, you run your business, you run it basically from home, yes. You mentioned earlier having young children, mm-hmm. and if you release them, yes, a bit older now. Mm. Um, did you find it a challenge balancing home life? Work, and particularly when they're kind of happening mm-hmm. in the same place. Yeah. And the question that was never asked of men, but always asked mm-hmm. of women, is what about raising children at the same time mm-hmm. as running the business? But what do you have? Yes, it was challenging, I won't lie, and I think kids, once you're there in the house, they think, oh, well, she's here, so she's available, even though I could be in the middle of editing or something, you know, they're looking for this, they're looking for that, but I used to say, look, I'm working, and it was great, because I could be flexible with them, so I'd plan my day around their lunchtime, so I know I could edit for two hours, they'd come in at 12, give the lunch, and, and then I have a few more hours, you know, to do whatever I have to do, but it is great, I think, when you have children, to be in a job like that, where you are flexible, because you can fit it in around your life style and around the kids obviously they're older now so I don't have that problem anymore but you know people still do like they call oh you know at the door for a coffee and because you're working from home but I think everyone in Ireland has experienced that now with COVID after the last two years working from home you know it, it is it's not easy I've done a number of these interviews where only actually yesterday where the doorbell would ring in the middle yeah of course that's <laughs> it yeah you just have to deal with it and you know yeah. but having said that it's a it's a great privilege I think to work for yourself because you have that flexibility. And do you find it quite difficult to separate work life from your own time? Um no, I don't think so. Uh I, I think okay, my my partner would disagree, I suppose, when I'm in a city I'm going around with the camera, I'm constantly stopping and it's like, come on, come on. But you can't help it because everywhere you see a photo. So but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I mean he might say it is. Um, but otherwise, no, not really. I mean, people are generally very good. And, and I don't mind if somebody rings me in the evening or, you know, because to be honest, they're working probably nine to five, so they can't talk. So you have to be flexible, I think. And, and, and I don't mind that. I really don't. And, and you mentioned some of your experiences in Dublin. Can you give me 
any idea of what a typical day's work could be. For example, a wedding. Or does, 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 does it start even beforehand, I assume? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the wedding couple would bring you inquire, obviously, you send them packages, pricing, then you could probably go through it with them, uh, meet them possibly, or not as the case may be at the moment with COVID, but we'd organize a Zoom session and um, take the booking. I, I would contact the couple about two weeks before their, their wedding day, and I asked them for a list of shots of, of you know, family shots, all the shots they want, so I have it on the day so I can mark it off because we can't take it again. So it's very important to get every shot that they want. And we do a plan as well because the wedding day has been, you know, they can go crazy. So we do a rough plan for photography. Sometimes it doesn't go according to, but at least I think sometimes it's up to the photographer to move the day along because the couple haven't done this before most times. So they kind of need your guidance, you know, with timings and so on and so forth. And um, so we, we, we make the plan, we go through that the night before, everything's charged up. Do you ever visit the venue in advance? Oh yeah, if before? it's a venue I haven't done before and I possibly can, I will, I'll go and scout out the venue so I know where I'm going to take the photos and bring the couple on the day so we can move quite fast. So yeah, yeah I do. On the day itself, and on the day then I arrive to the bride's house, I always love that, it's always great fun, there's champagne and all the makeup everything getting ready so there's a great buzz and i get all those shots for instance the shoes the jimmy choos uh, very jealous of those jimmy choos i'll have a pair one day um yeah just get all the detail shots uh the bride getting ready dress going on and then if i can if i have time i try to head to the venue to get the groom and all the men before the ceremony or the church and then we go in uh we get the bride arriving into the church do the whole ceremony outside, guests meet and greet, all that. And then we go on to do, generally I try to do the family shots fast because people, you know, they don't want to hang around. So we try to get those done. And I find when you have the list, and I always tell the couple, tell people we're doing the shots, we'd appreciate if you can be there. And I think when you do that, people are very good. You know, they know and they'll, they'll be where they're meant to be most of the time. It's always one. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we get those. And then I do the bridal party. So the bridesmaids, the groomsmen, and then I take the couple off for 20 minutes, no more, 20 minutes, half an hour, depending on the couple. And we get, it gives them a little bit of downtime on the day together too, just the two of them. And we get some lovely shots just of those. That's really big. You can be creative then if you've just the two of them. You've a little bit of time to set up shots and do something really special for them, which I love to give them. The props around you, you know, the car or yeah, like you use the, the vintage cars or the steps on a building or or anything like that. You just have a look and and see this is going to be nice, you know, and set the scene and uh, yeah, and a couple love it. I mean, Dublin City, I love because it's like amazing for photography, and I can do twenty minutes. I can do Stephen's Green. Grafton Street, Anne's Lane with the umbrellas. Uh, what's the pub there with the great Guinness? Oh, I can't remember the name of it. Uh, straight down onto Dawson Street, 20 minutes, and uh, we do Bewley's, Brown Thomas. It's brilliant. You know, and couples love that, the variety. So, yeah. You do the commercial work. I do do a bit of commercial work. I work for a media company, um, a friend of mine who I used to work with. I used to work in an animation studio mm -hmm. and he contacted me because they were looking for a photographer. So I was very lucky. So I freelance for them and I do a lot of their commercial work. So they do a lot of 360 degree tours. Mm -hmm. So it could be hotels, it could be restaurants, funeral homes. Yeah. I've even done funeral homes, butchers, you name it. So that's nice. And I'm all over the country with that. So unfortunately during COVID, our reps weren't out selling. So it was quieter, but hopefully now things are getting back on track and we'll get moving with that again. Yeah, but mean, that's nice. It's nice work. Getting back on track, like it's ahead. There's no point ahead of it. Your like, business. Oh, decimated completely. You know, I mean, there was no occasions happening, no weddings, no communions, christenings, confirmations. And even with the commercial, as I said, our reps weren't out on the road, so they weren't selling. Uh, so it was obviously very quiet, but I was very lucky. I took the opportunity. Fingal were giving a grant to revamp your website basically which was really helpful so i did that in conjunction with the media company who i work for because that's what they do and they do it really well and i think that's something as well i just meant to say to you i think know what you're good at when you're and you know that side of it i'm you know i think to promote myself i wouldn't be very good at it mm. so it's great to hand that over to professionals because they really do know what they're doing and you know, it pays to do that because I think as good as you are, if people can't find you, you won't get the work, you know. So I think it was a great opportunity and we revamped the whole website and divided it into commercial photography and into personal photography and they did a smashing job. So big thanks to Fingal. Yeah, I have to say that for that, you know, it was really worthy. And then they also run a workshop as well. Mm -hmm. 
uh, in conjunction with that. So that was, yeah, it was yeah, very interesting. Like this team, there's a lot of sports out there, and, and even here in the library, I'm looking at here, mm -hmm. we have the, the, the Work Matter Centre. Yeah. And you know, there's the Leo and all these kind of places where you can get help and advice and That's, support. Right? There's a lot there. And even through that, because there were so many small suppliers on that uh, webinar with Fingal, I got a job from that. There was another lady who had a company making honey. And she needed to do her website, so I did all the photography. So it's all about, it's all about networking, yeah, really. And I think the more work you do, the more you get, obviously, because the word of mouth is, is the best advertising. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. Uh, next question I want to ask you is something I've asked all the other interviewees, and it's interesting to hear your answers. So what do you know now that you wish you'd known when you were first starting your travel business? What do I know now? Oh, my God, that's a hard one. Um, I think, I suppose, one thing I learned was not to pigeonhole myself into any genre of photography, because a lot of people said, oh, you know, stick to that, that's what you're good. But to be honest, it went in my favour that I didn't, because I can do everything from still life to portraits to commercial. Um, I know that now, so I'm glad I made that decision, if that makes sense. Um, I think, again, what I said earlier, know your strengths and work to them. And if you if that's not your strength, if you can afford it, get a professional, i.e. accountancy as well. I mean, they may know of grants and things like that, that that you wouldn't necessarily know about. I am brutal at keeping accounts or anything like that. So that was great to hand that end of it over, you know, and they can help you as well with where your business is going uh, and advise you going forward. Um, I think, what else? I think don't worry about what other people are doing as well. I think I was always watching other photographers and, oh, look, they seem really busy and they, you know, you don't know. At the end of the day, I think concentrate on yourself and what you're doing and make sure you're good at what you do and don't worry about what other people it's are doing. It is, it yeah. is. And some people are very good at that and, and fair play to them. Like some people really are very good and you think, oh, they're really busy all the time or whatever, or they're very good at promoting themselves and they can do that. I wouldn't be very confident in that. So I think it's great. Like when I read the bio of what they put on my website, I'm like, oh, is that me? But it is, but I just wouldn't be able to, to do that. So I think that's important. Website. Photography by Jam. Yeah. So yeah. It is. Um, yeah, no, that's, that's interesting. And I think all, all the women we've interviewed have come up with different answers mm. to that question. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting mm -hmm. that we're trying to build up a bit of a knowledge. Yeah, there. I think, and don't be afraid. You know, I think even for me, when I started going back into the commercial end of it, I hadn't been in a business place for years. I mean, since before my children. I was so nervous going in where there was like 70 people working to be trained. And, you know, I had to train with a photographer who was leaving and I was stressed about that. And will I get the hang of this? On one hand, it was lovely. I was out having lunch and that was great. But on the other hand, I was very nervous. And now again, like three or four years down the line, I'm doing it with my eyes closed. So I think it's not to be afraid to try new things. And if you don't know how to do it, Agree and figure it out. And there's always a certain weakness. Of it? course there is with any job, but fortune favours the brave and you have to just jump in with two feet. You'll sink or you'll swim, but that's nine a, times out of ten you'll swim. Yeah, I think from, from the other yeah. Yeah, very much so. And the last thing I want to ask is is there any advice for any other women who are considering maybe becoming entrepreneurs or setting up their own business? And and there's always that you just said it, that fear factor. It's not, there is, and I and I think yeah, there is always a fear factor working for yourself. So if you're the type of person that isn't able for that, it's probably not a good idea. But I think at the end of the day, go for it. Jump in with two feet. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Again, there's so much help out there, so many resources that you can use um, to, to get set up. Uh, online, look around, to see, see what other people are doing. Don't worry about what they're doing, but certainly there's so many ideas out there. Uh, tap into, as I say, get yourself a good accountant and somebody who can promote you. I think they are very important uh, things to do. And just have the confidence. And if you have to retrain, retrain. Go and learn. And there's nothing that you can't learn if you try and you, you really want to. As I said to you, YouTube, even no matter what you want, put it in. Yeah. How do I do this? The answer is there. Yeah. It's yeah. up to you to, to go with it Especially and, and with learn. Well. Especially with Somebody's photography. Done something yeah, somebody's done something. There's always something. It doesn't matter because in photography, there's always something that you don't know. Always. But rather than panic, figure it out. And I'm a real on a need to know basis person. If I don't need to know, I don't know until I need to know. So, but then you find out. That's it. And then you're glad because you go, no, why was I afraid of that? Why didn't I go do that before? Because sometimes we can get caught in a rut of, well, this is what I know and I, and I don't want to move out of that comfort zone. So I think 
just push yourself a little bit and you'll be amazed. Yeah, and what That's you can a achieve. Great, great place to finish. And thanks for having me see you at Donald Dodds and Sunday. For dinner. <laughs> yeah, we'll be making <laughs> it though. Listen, thanks, William. No, my pleasure. <laughs>